off to the left of the Eisenhower statue and behind the F-16 jet memorial. You'll see a memorial and statue honoring General George S. Patton with his dog Willie at its base. The Patton Memorial depicts General Patton addressing his troops at Bastogne. One of the most complicated military men of all time, General George Smith Patton Jr. was born November 11, 1885 in San Gabriel, California. He was known for carrying pistols with ivory handles in his intemperate manner and is regarded as one of the most successful United States field commanders of any war at any time. He continually strove to train his troops to the highest standard of excellence, nicknamed Old Blood and Guts due to his ruthless drive and apparent lust for battle. He wrote home to his wife, quote, when I'm not attacking, I get bilious, unquote. In 1945, Patton and his army managed to cross the Rhine and charge straight into the heart of Germany, capturing 10,000 square miles of enemy territory along the course of a 10-day march and liberating Germany from the Nazis in the process. George Patton achieved four-star rank for his battlefield exploits as one of the best commanders of mechanized forces on either side of the war. He succeeded Dwight D. Eisenhower as the military governor of the U.S. occupation zone in Germany when Ike or Eisenhower, a five-star general, was promoted to Army Chief of Staff. Patton decided during childhood that his goal in life was to become a hero. His ancestors had fought in the Revolutionary War, the Mexican War, and the Civil War, and he grew up listening to stories of their brave and successful endeavors. He attended the Virginia Military Institute for one year and went on to graduate from the United States Military Academy at West Point on June 11, 1909. He was then commissioned a second lieutenant in the 15th Cavalry Regiment. Patton's first real exposure to battle occurred when he served as a member of the legendary General John J. Pershing's staff during the expedition to Mexico. In 1915, Patton was sent to Fort Bliss along the Mexican border where he led routine cavalry patrols. A year later, he accompanied Pershing as an aide on his expedition against Francisco Pancho Villa into Mexico. Patton gained recognition from the press for his attacks on several of Villa's men. Impressed by Patton's determination, Pershing promoted him to captain and asked him to command his headquarters troops upon their return from Mexico. With the onset of World War I in 1914, tanks were not being widely used. In 1917, however, Patton became the first member of the newly established United States Tank Corps, where he served until the Corps were abolished in 1920. Patton took full command of the Corps, directing ideas, procedures, and even the design of their uniforms. Using his first-hand knowledge of tanks, Patton organized the American Tank School in Bourges, France and trained the first 500 American tankers. Patton had 345 tanks by the time he took the brigade into Moose Argon operation in September 1918. When they entered into battle, Patton had worked out a plan where he could be in the front lines maintaining communications with his rear command posts by means of pigeons and a group of runners. Patton continually exposed himself to gunfire and was shot once in the leg while he was directing the tanks. His actions during that battle earned him the Distinguished Service Cross for Heroism, one of the many medals he would collect during his lifetime. When the German Blitzkrieg began in Europe, Patton finally convinced Congress that the United States needed a more powerful armored striking force. With the formation of the armored force in 1940, he was transferred to the 2nd Armored Division at Fort Benning, Georgia, and named Commanding General on April 11, 1941. Two months later, Patton appeared on the cover of Life magazine. Also during this time, Patton began giving his famous blood and gut speeches in an amphitheater he had built to accommodate the entire division. By November 8, 1942, Patton was commanding the Western Task Force, the only American force landing for Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of North Africa. After succeeding there, Patton commanded the 7th Army during the invasion of Sicily in July 1943, and in conjunction with the British, 8th Army restored Sicily to its citizens. Patton commanded the 7th Army until 1944, when he was given command of the 3rd Army in France. Patton and his troops dashed across Europe after the Battle of Normandy and exploited German weaknesses with great success, covering the 600 miles across France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. When the Third Army liberated Buchenwald concentration camp, Patton slowed his pace. He instituted a policy, later adopted by other commanders, of making local German civilians tour the camps. By the time World War II was over, 
the Third Army had liberated or conquered 81,522 square miles of territory. In October 1945, Patton assumed command of the 15th Army in the American-occupied Germany. December 9, 1945, he suffered injuries as the result of an automobile accident. Patton died 12 days later, on December 21, 1945. He is buried among the soldiers who died in the Battle of the Bulge in Ham, Luxembourg. Remembered for his fierce determination and ability to lead soldiers, Patton is now considered one of the greatest military figures in history. The 1970 film Patton, starring George C. Scott in the title role, provoked renewed interest in Patton. The movie won seven Academy Awards, including Best Actor and Best Picture, and immortalized General George Smith Patton Jr. as one of the world's most intriguing military men of all time.